FIFA 20 might not be the series at absolute peak form. Volta isn't the revolution it perhaps could have been and career mode still feels underdeveloped. But modern FIFA is such a broad, deep and complete offering that it remains a must buy for football fans. On the pitch, FIFA 20 is remarkably similar to last year. There are some welcome improvements, like more natural first touches and more satisfying ball physics, but things feel very similar to FIFA 19 once you walk out of the tunnel. Set pieces, though, have received a bit of a makeover, specifically direct free kicks and penalties. In a throwback to the halcyon days of FIFA 2003, both now have you aim a reticle where you want to place the ball. Then, like with last year's time finishing, you'll need to press shoot again at the right time, while also adding curve if you wish. Both take time to get used to, but they offer greater depth and satisfaction when you smack one into the top corner. FIFA 20's biggest new mode is, of course, Volta Football, bringing street soccer to the main series for the first time. You control a squad of superstars aiming to become the world's best in a journey that takes you around the globe. Matches are shorter and more chaotic than a standard 11-a-side game, and they feel sufficiently different and entertaining to become a worthwhile staple in FIFA's roster of modes. Fancier tricks and flicks and simplified tactics make it a mode that feels a little more focused on fun, but don't expect the depth FIFA Street gave us all those years ago. There are no game-breaker shots here, and it's not as easy to utterly humiliate your opponent with outrageous nutmegs and rainbow flicks. Instead, Volta focuses on the culture of street soccer, where the language and atmosphere are more relaxed, more expressive, and more open to customization. The Volta store and challenges both unlock new gear, and combined with the ability to play against online human opponents in Volta League, these mean Volta has more lasting appeal than the mode it replaces, the journey. For those who miss cutscenes and dialogue choices, there's Volta's story. Its world tour structure is compelling, and its real-world locations well-realised, with unique personalities and playstyles of their own. However, the characters you share your travels with are so irritating, and the writing so aggressively how-do-you-do, -do, fellow kids, that it becomes a bit of a chore to play. Other oddities, such as inexplicably needing to play the same opponent over and over, every squad having the exact same goalkeeper, and some basic positioning errors mean Volta comes across as a mode that feels simultaneously long-lasting and half-baked. Career mode is FIFA's other main single-player offering, and it comes with a raft of new features. Proper conversations between manager and players are finally possible, for example. Players will come to you to complain or to thank you about their game time, as they have for many years, but you now have the opportunity to reply, with the aim to keep their morale and performance levels high. The system is shallow, with the morale bar seemingly the only variable you can affect, and messages still repeat themselves with the same old typos, but it is at least a little more interactive than the stagnant old email system. Similarly, pre- and post-match press conferences have been overhauled. Again, the objective here is to maintain your team's morale, and again, there isn't much more to it. But it is more visually and intellectually stimulating than a simple menu screen, as it was before. The final big new feature, dynamic player potential, means players' potential ratings now change based on your treatment of them. The move will please career mode ultras, but in practice, it makes little difference to anybody but the most committed of players. Disappointingly, despite all the changes, career mode still feels a little bare bones, and it still contains a number of inaccuracies. The transfer window ends too late for English clubs, for instance, while VAR and short goal kicks are yet to be introduced into FIFA at all. Transfer negotiations, scouting and youth setups are the same for yet another year in a row. Career mode has taken some steps forward this year, but a revolution is needed. Goal. The goals keep going in for them. I don't think they're going to throw this away now. Ultimate Team continues its expansion and is now bigger and better than ever. There's a Fortnite Battle Pass type system called Foot Seasons, which is essentially an expansion of the existing daily and weekly challenges with new tasks you can work towards over multiple weeks or the entire year. It all adds another way to be rewarded and yet another objective to work towards. With a new casual mode called Foot Friendlies also introduced, Ultimate Team is now as compelling and as complete as ever, and I'm horribly obsessed once again. Flawed and iterative, but comforting, complete and compelling, FIFA 20 is as frustrating and as essential as ever. The journey in FIFA Street will continue to be missed, but despite its flaws, Volta offers a genuinely different option for those who want to dip in and out across FIFA's selection of game types while Ultimate Team continues its route to world domination. It's just a shame career mode continues to stagnate, even if EA has finally remembered that it exists.